so we need to take a look at sketching logarithmic functions. So we're going to do a specific example here, including making a table, and then we'll generalize. So we're going to sketch y equals log base 2 of x. So the x, right, might be referred to as an argument. The y is the exponent that the base would have to be raised to. So if we approach it that way, you can sort of decide. Do you want to pick the x values or do you want to pick the y values? So I might do a couple of both just so that you see and you can pick the one that you like best. So if I'm going to pick the x values, then I'm going to be a little bit careful because I want to pick x values that somehow I can get to exponentially from a base of 2. So for instance, I might choose x equals 2. So if x equals 2 here on my function, that means I'm trying to find the y value, right? Which tells me what is the log base 2 of 2, right? So this gets me the y value that's going to go in right here. So if I think about that, right, in the circular way, you take the base to what power gets me the argument. So 2 to the what gets me 2, and the answer is 1. Okay. So 2, 4, right, 4 is a good one for x, because that's a power of 2 log base 2 of 4. Notice the x changes. The base is always going to be 2 on these. right? And this equals y. What y value works for this? 2 to the what gets me 4. 2 squared gets 4, so my y value would have to be 2. Remember the answer in your logarithms is what would the exponent be for the base to turn into the argument. So you might be think, let's pick one more x because I've got 2, I've got 4, 6. It's tempting, but not good because, right, there's nothing super nice that I can raise my base to to get a 6 out. Right, so you would take, right, 8 would be the next nice x number you could take. Okay, so if x is 8, then it is log base 2 of 8 is what? How do we find that? Base raised to what power gets me the argument? 2 to the what gets 8. Right. One more integer. So before I go, OK, so I have three points. I want to find three more points. And for these next three, we're going to pick the y values. But before I do that, let's go plot the ones we have. And then that might give us a clue to the ones we want to look for, right, the y values we want to find. So, ooh. I might not do all of those. So I have 2, 1. x is 2, y is 1. x is 4, y is 2. x is 8. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. y is 3. Okay, so I've got a pretty good, good idea what's going on over here in quadrant 1. Let's see if we can find some other things. So how about some negative y values? or 0. Can y be 0? Oh, let's see. So now we're going to pick the y values. OK, I'll grab a different color here. So if y is 0, and should we try a negative one or a fraction, maybe? We can try. OK, let's try a negative. So let's say negative 1. And let's go ahead and try negative 2, see if we can see a pattern going there. And then just for grins, let's try a fraction and think of what that might mean. OK, here we go. So this time I know y, and I'm looking for x. So y is 0. So I'm going to go ahead, right? I'm still finding my points here. So 0 in for the y this time, and we have to figure out the x. 0 equals log base 2 of x. I do that same circular motion. I grab the base. This time I know what I'm raising it to. And that result gives me the argument. 2 to the 0 is 1. Or log base 2 of 1 is 0. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and write it 
the way these other guys have been written here. So now I have log base 2 of x, looking for x this time, equals negative 1, 2 to the negative 1 is x. 2 to the negative 1, exactly, 1 half. Is that enough of a pattern? 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. Okay, I'm probably not going to write down an answer for this one, but I'll, I'll, I'll put it up here so you can be thinking about it. So now I'm doing y equals 1 half. So I have log base 2 of x is 1 half. Okay, and I'm looking for the x value. 2 to the 1 half is x. So x is 2, the base, raised to the 1 half power. And if I raise a number to the 1 half, remember that's a square root. So square root of 2 is the value we get when y is 1 half. Okay, so now I have three more points to plot and a fourth one to sort of think about. So let's see, x is 1, y is 0. The table, by the way, is very handy because it lets you remember who's x and who's y when you go to plot over here. Sometimes you can get kind of messed up in there because you go opposite when you're um, doing logarithms. You think of it the opposite way. So the table helps keep you sane. So let's see, x one half, y is negative one. Oh dear, x one fourth, eek, y is negative two, super close. Do you suppose it hits that y axis? Do you suppose we could ever make x actually equal zero? Huh, you might want to think about that, what it would have to be. Two to the what power, what x value, I'm sorry, what y value could turn that into a zero. Two to the what to get zero. Hmm. Yep, can't come up with it, but, right, we can get super close. Do you remember what that word for it is? Starts with an A. I'm just connecting my dots here while I'm talking. Nice, smooth connection. And what we have over here is an asymptote. My graph is going to get very close to that negative y-axis, but not intersect it. Okay, so here's my picture. Uh, think about what the domain and the range might be. Right, we already have restrictions. I will restate them down below. But for now, we'll just talk about domain. What x values do we seem to see on our picture here? So 0 to infinity, using my interval notation, and 0 we can never actually get. So I'm going to use a parenthesis there, too, and not a bracket. Right? I can't put a 0 in for x. The range for this function, right? all the y values, well, I've got, let's see, negatives, 0, fractions, positives. Looks like I've got all of them accounted for. So all real numbers or the negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, and then, right, if you know some shifting rules, you can apply those and move this function all around. The, it's kind of hard to see when you move things. Typically, I move the um, x-intercept and I move my asymptote. If I have shifts left or right, or so left and right shifts, I move the asymptote and the x-intercept. Um, up and down shifts, it just shifts the x-intercept. Okay, so in general, for y equals log base b of x, oh, the general restrictions, the base, this is the same as what you would have for um, an exponential function. So the base must be greater than 0 and not 1. Okay, so the base, log base b, B must be a real number that's greater than 0, and we don't let it be 1. So the general shape, so if B is greater than 1, like the one we just did when B was 2, it kind of has this asymptote and then up and over, and we cross there at 1, 0. When b is less than 1, and right, if you want to be sure, it's also greater than 0. So when b is between 0 and 1, the graph is a reflection 
over the x-axis. So one thing, in case you're curious, you might have noticed about your logarithmic growth, especially if you have kids or have ever seen a growth chart, right? They typically look very logarithmic. You have this super, and we don't have negative, of course, when we're talking about kids' heights, but right, we have this super fast growth for the first 10 years or so, and then it starts tapering off, and there's not a whole lot of growing going on right, after you reach a certain point. So logarithmic growth has this great big burst at the beginning, and then it kind of tapers off. Okay. As opposed to exponential growth, if you remember that, it starts off kind of slowly, and then it goes crazy at the end. OK, so one, two more things. One is the natural logarithm. And natural logarithm refers to a very special base called base e, which is a number that you can find on your calculator. And if you have log base e of x, there's a shorthand that we write ln of x. And the ln needs to go on the left-hand side. So if I were to ask you to sketch this graph, right, it's going to have the same basic shape. This is just a base. Right? It fits the criteria between right, well, greater than 0. And in fact, the value of e, I should have looked it up. I know it's 2.718 and then a bunch of other stuff. But this is how it starts, so I can already tell that e is greater than 1, right? So that number is greater than 1, so it's going to look just like my other generic shape of a log function when the base is bigger than 1. OK, that was one more thing. The last thing, very last thing, is the relationship between the graphs of logarithms and exponentials. And I think I'll go ahead and use um, this here as the, the example. So y equals natural log x. So it's inverse function. So let's say um, I'll give it an f name so that we can keep it separate. f of x equals e to the x is the inverse function of that. So e to the x and natural log x are inverse functions which means they are reflected over the line y equals x. So I'm going to dot that in. Right There's my line y equals x. And e to the x, you may remember, looks like this. Starts off slowly and then goes crazy. Right. So those two lines are reflected over the the diagonal y equals x.